Hi, I'm Mike Huseman with River King Tackle and Outfitters with another episode of Striper 101. It's been quite a while since we put out an episode. We've got a whole series coming out. Today's episode is going to be on striped bass and the history of that fish in the Colorado River between Davis Dam and Parker Dam, where we like to catch a lot of the biggest fish around here. So, Sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode. We're gonna go over the history of the Colorado River here, the Davis Dam, striped bass, how they were put here, when they were put here. They were first introduced in 1962. Davis Dam was first completed in 1951. So we're gonna take you through the entire history of how this fishery was created, how the striped bass was introduced to this river, its lineage where these particular striped bass all come from from the very beginning they kind of made kind of a roundabout way to get here their first spawn how do they spawn how do they reproduce and why is this section of the river so good for those giant striped bass and why we seem to have so many of them stay tuned enjoy this episode share like and subscribe this is going to be a good one so hang on Davis Dam was constructed from 1942 and completed in 1952 as the third and final impoundment of the Lower Colorado River by the Bureau of Reclamation. Together with the Hoover Dam, 67 miles upstream, and the Parker Dam, 88 miles downstream, Davis Dam was built to provide flood protection, hydroelectric generation, and water storage for agricultural, industrial, and domestic use in the Southwest. The storage of water behind the dam and the regulation of water flow in the Colorado River below the dam allowed the United States to comply with the Mexican Treaty of 1944, particularly annual delivery of 1.5 million acre feet of water to Mexico in the Colorado River. Davis Dam was the only major dam in which construction included excavation of a new river channel, a portion of which became a through dam forebay for delivery of water to the power plant and spillway. And in 1951, the first of the concrete stop logs dropped into the spillway slots at Davis Dam. Gradually, water began to rise behind the dam, covering an area which had been combed through thoroughly by various members of the National Park Service for several years. Now the archeologists and surveyors could give way to those who develop parks, picnic grounds, baiting, boating, fishing, and other necessities of federal recreation area, forming the Lake Mead National Recreation Area. And hence, the majestic Lake Mojave in all its glory. And of course, the mighty Colorado River below Davis Dam through the Laughlin and Bullhead City area where we catch those river monsters called striped bass. Oh, oh boy. Oh yeah. <laughs> hey, we got tomorrow fish. Green is the color. Easy Got 
Got him. Yeah! Oh! Yeah! Holy! <laughs> Woo! The mighty striped bass, also known as Morone Saxatillus. This portion of the Colorado River below Davis Dam in the Laughlin and Bullhead area creates the perfect breeding ground for the striped bass. Average water temperatures are in the middle 50s since the water being released from Davis Dam is coming out of more than 100 feet of water from Lake Mojave, which sits just behind Davis Dam, providing the perfect habitat and breeding ground for big striped bass. Between 1962 in 1969, a program was conducted by the Arizona and California Game and Fish Departments to create a striped bass fishery in the Colorado River between Davis and Parker Dams. 93,000 striped bass fingerlings and yearlings were introduced during this period. It was not expected by the biologists that these fish would reproduce but they did, and boy did these fish reproduce. They never had to do another stocking, and these fish had their first major successful spawn in 1974. The original stocking of the striped bass in the Colorado River came from Tracy, California, near the Delta in Central and Northern California. The broads from these fish were initially from the Atlantic East Coast area and brought to the Delta in California in 1871 and then in 1962 the offspring of these fish were trucked to the Colorado River establishing our population of the great striped bass. The striped bass in the portion of this Colorado River will spawn from April till June, typically over shallow, rocky areas with fast moving water below dams. Eggs, the eggs will float for a period of two to three days before hatching. Females mature between the ages of four and seven years old, and they produce a remarkable number of eggs. 4.5 million in one 14 year old female. Striped bass don't make nests like their counterparts, a largemouth or a smallmouth bass. In order for the eggs to survive, they must be suspended in the water column in a moving current. The female striped bass will lay thousands of eggs at one time. She will be followed by smaller males, usually numbering between three and five fish, which then will sperm onto the suspended eggs which the female have just laid. These eggs will remain suspended in the water column for two to three days, hatching on the fourth and creating a new life. <laughs>